All right, all right. We're live. We are live. We are live. Uh, greeting champion parents. Welcome back to Mommy Talk. As always, we are here to share information and resources to inspire positive parental engagement. We are real, relatable, and right on time with Dr. Perk, Miss Lisa, and myself, Miss April. And we have a special guest who is the champion parent, playwright, entertainment manager, music extraordinaire, author, publisher, just to name a few, Mr. Carl King. Yay. Hello. Welcome, Mr. Carl King. We definitely appreciate you for being here with us at oh, Mommy no, love Monday. I love you. Yes. yes, we appreciate you for coming on with us um, this evening. Um, we just have a few, you know, um, conversational questions to ask about your champion parentship and also your career. And we'll discuss that. So welcome. I'm I'm definitely excited to have you uh, have you here with us uh, today. So first of all, I really wanted to start and just say uh, thank you because you did some things uh, for Mommy Talk uh, a couple of months ago. You um, got us some awesome guests uh, to call into our radio show, and uh, we were so excited. Um, we hoped that we could get our questions out. You know, I think I might have gotten a little starstruck. You know, but um, it was definitely a blessing to have these voices of people who we have watched over the years mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, come and chat with us. So uh, first of all, before we get started, I want to say thank you. You are more than welcome. So my first question, and um, Carl, I know that you are a very humble uh, person and amen, thank you, Jesus. But, you know, Carl, I have a question. Who is Carl King? Now, I know you humble, man, but come on, who are you? <laughs> you know, and it's really funny uh, explaining who you are to somebody. But if you want to say what the essence of me is, I'm a parent above everything. And mm -hmm. so what kind of drove me into all the entities that I've, I've worked in has been that thing, always trying to show my children because I'm a guy who never graduated high school. I didn't take education serious, you know, but as a result of that, showing my children doing this, like all of a sudden I'm writing for a television show, I'm doing this and I'm a person who's never been, you know, never went to school for any of this. Yeah, I used to even write their college papers. Sometimes they would have certain essays in college they would bring them to me to write and I would feel good. Like I could live vicariously through them by writing it. So all in all, I'm just a, a, a child of God and I try not to squander my talents. That's why I'm in the shortest sense. Okay, so child of God, again, amen. You know, uh, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing to be a child of God. Uh, so as a champion parent, you know, we talk about champion parents and we uh, basically say that as a champion parent, uh, we know we're not perfect. You know, um, and we talked about that with you, you know, being so humble and everything. So who are you as a champion parent? You know, I'm a person and I'm going to, you know, reiterate something I said without having education. But now I have four collegiate daughters, one who's a doctor. And my thing was pushing education on them to be better than me, you know, and then always having an open ear for them. I mean, I have all girls, you know, so that in and of itself is a challenge. You know, I don't know if you know what it's like to live in a house full of women and you. I mean, I was double, I mean, quadruple teamed. Yeah, you know, but my daughters, and now my daughters are my mothers, it seems like. Yes. You know, so my thing was instilled in them. My, I have, since I have girls, I, I, my, the motto was, you don't need a king to rule a kingdom. So I always made them make sure that they had everything they needed and not depend. Because a lot of girls get caught up in the situation with men and the man owns everything. and. All of a sudden, he's putting you out and you're back home with kids. I said, you'll find the right guy when you have everything that you need to sustain yourself. And thankfully, there are married to men I love. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm sure you, you, you set the tone to allow them to, you know, go out and find partners who treated them similar to what their dad treated them. So I'm sure you were institutional and you provided a good foundation is what I want to say for them you know, in their um, marriages or in their relationships, yeah. Absolutely. They got all guys that complete opposite of me. <laughs> I'm sure, I mean, they may be opposite, maybe physically, but they probably have some similar attributes. I think so. Yeah. 
I like what I I like when I heard um Carl King say his whole um pretty much what he does his resume but at the end of the day he said I'm a parent first and I think that's a important quality to have as a champion parent because sometimes we lose ourselves but at the end of the day when you have children you pe people out there have to know you are a parent first and I think that is so important and I thank you for sharing that for our listeners who are listening today yeah. Yeah. You're more than welcome. I mean, but for me, it's the, and people say, well, no, you've done so much. It's the greatest thing I've ever accomplished in my life. Seriously, it, to me, it's like, like I would be at um, schools. And I mean, people say I brag on my children a lot, but I was just telling this young lady yesterday about my neighbor that because she was from my, the, she used to be the teacher for my grandsons. But I didn't allow my children to bring C's in the house. I mean, because when I was in school, the C was average. And I know I'm not raising average children. So for you to come in the house with a C, I don't understand it. So that never happened. They're all, you know, like Kirby, my daughter, daughter's a doctor. She graduated um, some cum laude, you know, and they, they've always been like my daughter was saying yesterday. Yeah, he got mad when I got on a B on a roll. And I'm, that's not what we're doing here. We're, <laughs> we're doing better than that. So and parents will complain about grades of their children, but they don't realize that's your grade. Mm hmm. You know, that's your report card. So if you're hollering and screaming, you need to holler and scream at yourself. Yeah. And and you know what? I, I really kind of want to go back to uh, even the point that Dr. Point, uh, Dr. Pert, that's, that Dr. Pert uh, pointed out um, this uh, and Ms. April, even just having the foundation. I love that uh, you uh, stress to your young ladies um, to uh, be grounded, uh, to have that uh, foundation, because a lot of times when it's a truck going by my window, <laughs> but a lot of times, you know, um, when young ladies, uh, they get in relationships, they lose themselves um, because they don't have the strong foundation. And they, I don't, you know, of course, I don't think anyone does it purposely, but when you don't, you know, you as a father, you know, having a a strong father figure in your life is very important. And, um, you know, so just to, to stress that, um, that they have to have a foundation that they have to, uh, keep themselves grounded. Um, so, to that point, I want to ask about, um, so in your career, so before we get into your career, um, just trying to understand how do your uh, children, um, your young ladies, how did they fit into your decision um, to make some of the choices that you've made now, as far as your career, your daily life? That's funny. My children, and I, we used to have this thing we called amnesty hour, you know, because I was a very strict disciplinarian, you know, I mean, I was really my my children my, all my daughters hated me let's get it out of the way growing up because i was always on them about everything but their mother of course was the buffer for all that mm -hmm. so we would have this amnesty hour moment i would let them say whatever they want to say you know after this we're not going to discuss it anymore you're going to get the chance to speak your mind every time it was always all about me they never had anything negative to say about their mom but they got a chance to really chastise me and i think that made them stronger because i have very strong daughters they're very strong willed and now like i said they're my mothers i can't argue them down i don't even just i just whatever they say do i just pretty much do it at this point mm -hmm. because they they're who they are you know what i'm saying one of the things that um i heard you say um that you said that a student's report card is a reflection of uh the parenting in the household I agree with that um, to a certain extent because I do feel that there are some parents out here who try their best and that they utilize um, the resources. So I would just like to say for those champion parents who are listening that as long as you know that you're supporting your child and you're doing what you need to do, then that makes you a champion parent. Because that's one of the things I tell my children. I say, hey, I'm going to be that champion parent for you. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to give you what you need. And also, if you follow the rules and do what you're supposed to do, I am going to give you your wants. And so I just feel that it's important out there for parents to know and don't give up. 
and continue to support your children because I know everybody goes through that tough time with their children. And one, a veteran um, parent told me um, who actually had a hard time with her daughter who turned out to be very successful in middle school. And it really wasn't a reflection of her parenting. Her uh, daughter was just going through something and she told me the best advice that I actually um, will implement with my children is to love them unconditionally and support them. You know, and when I, every, time, every time I've ever said that in life, I've got a little pushback. And I've always said, even to my children, if you did your best and you got this, that would be one thing. But it got to a point where I knew who they were. I knew what they were capable of. And, no, and, no, and my daughter, the, the one I keep bringing up, Kirby, who's a doctor, she had a problem learning at first. And we had to you know, put her in different situations. She even one day was upset because her sisters were so you know, bright. And she thought like, oh, like I'm not as good as them. And we went through that moment, but she turned out to be the best student once she got all the things she needed. You know, and now today she just brags about everything to everybody, you know, because she was the only one who went to med school and became a doctor. You know, so but the other ones weren't trying to go in that direction anyway, but she'll tell you, well, I can say that because I'm a doctor. It's the funniest thing in the world. But I mean, I, I really didn't mean it that way. I meant for me and mine. And if my daughter ended up getting a bad report card and she did her best, that was me. But it's, as her parent, it's for me to find her outlets to help her. And that's what we did. We put, took her to learning centers and all that kind of stuff. And she, when it clicked, it clicked. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it goes to, you know, there is no one size that fits all. And it goes right. back to our term, you know, what a champion parent is. You know, what works for you and your house may be different from, you know, so thank you, Dr. Perf, for bringing that up, um, for uh, pointing out that point. But um, even to, your, uh, to you, uh, Carl, in your household, it worked. You know, you knew, and I think that's what a lot of us as parents, we need to understand uh, what our children um, capability, capabilities are. You know, I know my daughter went through a uh, stage of like, she struggled, you know, and I had to relax and stop trying to pull more out of her than she could do at that time. You know, I had to push her, but I couldn't, you know, push her further than she was able to go at that time, right. if that makes sense. So, you know, again, you know, one size doesn't doesn't always fit all. So, you know, speaking, you know, again to that, um, was there a point where, you know, in raising your uh, children where you felt like you were uh, you were doing certain things and you had to kind of change your change it up a little bit, you know, where you saw that something wasn't working and you had to kind of change your course? Well, <laughs> I want to say this. In all honesty, I have. To, um, I don't think I could have done it without their mom yeah. because I don't have patience, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't. And then, and the thing is, and that was my flaw and they let me know about it. My children now tell me even more things about what I didn't do. And they, they're glad to tell me, you know, like when they do <laughs> things with their kids and they'll go like, dad, I kind of understand now, you know, I think all their, um, the love, the more, the love they have for me now kind of came when they got to be adults and realize, okay, this is what he meant. So, and I mean, I, their mom just was the perfect, I mean, we were the perfect pair for my, how harsh I was and how loving she is because she's literally the most loving person in the world. I mean, I have to pull her back from helping people. It's like, for, cause she, I mean, she'll, I mean, she's almost kind of gullible with, with so much, you know, like, uh, things with come to people, people walk up to her. I need this for that. And she thinks she's supposed to give everything to everybody. I'm not as loving. I, I love, but I'm not there. So that that was the thing. I and I, I try to tell, but I can't take the credit for this because without her, I would have never been able to do it. And that's you know? good. That's awesome that you had a good pair and you are were actually an effective team, an effective ooh, champion ooh. parenthood or champion parentship, I would say. Yeah, champion. There you yeah, yeah, but I did want to say hello to some of our viewers. Miss Felicia Grimes Baldwin said hello. Yeah. And then, of course, our um, champion parent listener, Dorothy Morton, says, God bless you all. Hey. Yes, I definitely want to give a, a shout out to our viewers. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We love you. We love your support. We love your mm -hmm. feedback you know, and we love the real feedback, you know, we are not sensitive, 
you know, and uh, we can only, uh, you know, grow, you know, from your honesty, you know, we definitely appreciate uh, your support. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So, so what um, are you, uh, what kind of things are you working on right now? Uh, what are you working on? What, what do we have forward to look? Uh, What's one of the things he working on? Carl King. No, in I, um, Carl, thing, Carl King. Well, yeah. The thing that is really, I mean, it's, this thing just came up last week and it's, and it's, and it's, the, the synergy is so amazing. We were um, tasked by this group to put together uh, incentive to vote platform and they wanted to do it over the internet, you know, through Zoom or, or you know, some, some other uh, way. And we got uh, Michael Eric Dyson involved, which was great. And he was, you know, happy to do it for what we're trying to do. Then we reached out to the um, Anthony Hamilton and he has his group, the Hamiltones, and we got them involved. I reached out to my uh, good friend, Coca Brown, who you all know, because we were trying to do it to where it's have different people, since Coca's also in the same state as Kamala Harris, you know, so I reached out to her, we reached out to some other people to put this together, but once the ball started rolling, it blossomed into this bigger thing, you know, so like I said, now we're waiting on some um, information for sponsorship, because we want to do that venue. And the Hamiltons are releasing their album on the 28th, and it's perfect for this. They have an album called 1964. And it's so prolific to me because, you know, a person might write one song about, you know, racial equality on an album, and then they go commercial. This entire album, every song is about that. And they have so many vignettes, you know, from Baldwin and Lewis and Nina Simone that just, it just fits the time. I mean, they called it 1964, but it fits the climate that we're in politically right now. And so yeah. once that happened, other things just started to come together. So now we're um, just gonna ask um, Eric, um, well, I, I, I can't stand the fact that he has three names, Michael Eric Tyson, we're gonna ask him today, would he possibly fly in to Georgia so we can do it inside of the historic church, Martin Luther King's church, have the Hamiltons there as well, and then set up some satellites in different states and hosts from those states to bring it all together for another thing that has nothing to do with the thing we're doing with the other group of people. You know, it just wow. it just bubbled up to that, and that's that's it. I'm also working with um, the same group on the um, 100 year anniversary of a uh, Black Wall Street, and it's a two day event. It's with a black tie event. It's it's going to be amazing once everything comes together. So I'm looking real forward to that. Yeah, sounds great. Okay. Sounds great. Phenomenal. I'm excited just to hear about it. Right, doing great things. Great things. One of our um. Well, I'll wait till Christina come back because somebody in our um and our listeners said, is that Mary J. Blige? <laughs> 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 the top left, and I know Christina, but we'll we'll bring it back up when she comes back on because we know she has yeah. yeah, I just thought that was funny. But go ahead. Yeah, um, but I, I yeah. please put us on your uh your mailing list, you know, um, you know, so that we know, you know, when um these things are coming up. Oh, we're on mailing list, we're on a direct contact mailing. Yeah. It, no, this is this is true, and that you think I'm playing. <laughs> uh, well, April Denise does. He's so humble, y'all. He's so but humble. No, but I, I, when I was speaking to the group, I told them, I said, "Listen, I'm going to be doing mommy talk um, in a couple of days. I'm, I, I haven't told anything about anybody else about this. I say, but I do want to mention it on there, and I think that I've worked with them on some other projects, and I am looking at in the fact of once we get this thing together, how you guys can come in and help." To move this because right now we are going through something that no one has ever gone through. this is the most important election of your lifetime and mine yeah. i'm older than you guys so i know it is and we're really fighting for the soul of this country and right now we're so polarized that there are people who are saying things especially black people who say it doesn't mean anything it's that i mean they have this if it doesn't mean anything for you to vote then why are they suppressing it so hard and, and say that part again, please, please reiterate that because I want each and every person to hear why it is important to vote. And it's, it's sad because, and you know, it's not, not to criticize people. And I understand like right now, again, it's crucial right now. And like yeah. you said, why are they trying to suppress? They are collecting mailboxes. Did you all yeah. see that today? Yes. Yeah. They're collecting mailboxes. They, 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 they've it's, taken it's the important. mail sorters out of post office. Yeah. I mean, you take a mail sorter, a letter sorter out of a post office to slow things down. If you, and if That's you're too right. blind to see 
that this yeah. is the most dangerous president we've ever had. Yes. You know, because right now he's facing, if he doesn't make it, his name is on so many indictments. And so that makes him more dangerous than anybody else. And people have watched him. This is the closest to a dictator we've ever come to. Because people tell me, like when he first got in office, I told people, I say, if he gets a second term, he's going to push for a third term. They're like, no, that couldn't happen. He's done more things that you thought could never happen. He never gave up his businesses. He made money off the government. Every national person who came here, um, um, Democrats, I mean, not Democrats, uh, what do you call those people? Oh, God. Okay, I can't think of the word right now because I'm, I'm, I'm getting like a little bit Green excited. Party? Dignitary, every dignitary that came here oh. stayed in his properties, which means we okay. paid for it. And because they were there and they had to have security and special things, we paid more for it. And he yeah. made all the money off of it. You know, and he's, I mean, he's, he controls the stock market. I've made money. You sold that rocket stock, right, April? I made money off of oh, yeah, uh, the rocket. Yeah, th 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 things he, he said. He said, so if I can make money off of it in the stock market, I know he could, knowing he was going to say it weeks before. Yeah, that Kodak went crazy. That, oh, my it's Kodak crazy. quadrupled that one day. After but now it's, only, now it's only $10. $10. Oh yeah, yeah, it went up to like eighty, like eighty. No, 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 no. actually, it typed out at one hundred and seven. Why y'all ain't calling me? <laughs> wow, yeah, you had to just be on it. I was just like, it's just amazing how well it did. You know, yeah, so, and that's no different from when he, uh, you know, announced he was giving um, other monies to. I forgot what it was that fast, but that didn't bubble as much. But still, it moved the market around, and he know he knows what it's going to do. So Trump was a billionaire going into it, but he's a bigger billionaire now because now his daughter got patents out of China. She couldn't have got him. He wasn't his daughter. You know, and they always talk about him doing this, yeah. but he, I mean, he puts people in, I mean, his, his, the first guy in, ahead of the pandemic um, response was a dog groomer. Guy had no experience at all, but he put him in charge. You know, his son's wedding planner got a job, you know, in the White House. You know, and the postmaster general he put in there, this guy actually owns stock in the competing companies and UPS and all that. I mean, um, yes, UPS. He owns stock in the companies competing with the uh, mail service, the postal service. Mm -hmm. So him gutting it makes him more money. It's just ridiculous what's happening right before us. So if we don't um, take the initiative to vote and get this man out of office, I mean, he literally will make 2021 look like 1964. And I've been saying that all week long. So when this album dropped, it the center, I was like, oh my God, I've been saying this exact year for, for weeks now. So and I that's think I want to just I really want to just kind of point something out. Um, because I know right now this is very emotional. This is an emotional time. Um, because you know, of course, you have a big number of us that supports Trump, you have a big number of us who supports uh Biden. And, you know, I, and, I, and I want to listen to, you know, we want to listen to the views of, of everybody, you know, uh, right now. And, it, and it's hard for certain people to, it's hard for people to hear, um, to listen to both views, but we have to listen to uh, both views because I think that there's different things um, that affect different people. And I just ask that everybody just really just get out and try to do, you know, do your uh, research, um, communicate with, uh, you know, try to get in some, you know, conversations with people, you know, do your research, try to understand really what's going on, you know, with these, uh, with the different candidates, um, you know, because I know I could be very strong, in my opinion, you know, I can be really strong in my opinion. However, I still want to, um, you know, still try to keep my ears out because y'all hear my door ringing, my door to come to get it. That is my son. That's <laughs> funny. That's funny. So listen, wait. Um, to our viewers, I do think it's still important to to listen to 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 the views of of everybody. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You no, know, just and, shout um, out some of our viewers. Not to interrupt you, um, Miss Lisa. Mm -hmm. Um, Latori Williams said, "Hey, y'all, I miss y'all." And then uh, one viewer, um, Doctor Pert, was saying, "Is that Mary J. Blige in the top left?" And you were in the top left. <laughs> oh, you! They were saying you oh. were blind. That was funny. Oh wait a minute! I do her move that she always do. <laughs> oh, you actually have that down pat. Hey, yeah. hey! Yeah, I love Mary. Yeah, and then um, Calvin Nellums just said.
talk. What up, though? No, Mr. Uh, no, was the teacher. Yeah, so that's what I'm um, Well, I'm not as de de um, democratic as Lisa is. I want you all to go vote for uh, Biden Harris. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I do have a question for you, um, Mr. King. So being that you are a champion parent and you know, we always don't, a lot of parents don't start with silver spoons in their mouth. And it, it's challenging, you know, to, you know, balance parenting and accomplishing your goals. And you are quite successful. So how, what advice can you give champion parents out there who struggle with balancing parenting and, you know, wanting to complete their goals? You know, you asked all the perfect questions because my answers are a little bit obtuse from the, for the point of, I actually grew up kind of, you know, affluent. You know, my family owned businesses and things of that nature. So I was a kid who had all this, everything and all this kind of stuff. And I didn't really feel any bumps in the road in life until I got to be an adult, you know? And still, I say this to a, uh, I call her April Denise so much is being born with the last name King really kind of made me kind of a different mindset because my thing with everything I would try to conquer in life was like I was born King so I can do this and I used to rhyme it with Carl King and do anything because I really I, my children the same thing I really believe that I can do anything so when I've been first with hardship I have to quote um, Philippians 412 is the um, book in the Bible that I live by is I know what it's like to be content in all things, whether I'm well fed or hungry and want to have plenty. I always know that I'm going to be okay regardless and all situations are temporary. The only thing I could ever say and it's very cliche to parents is, you know, just don't stop moving forward. Just don't give up. I mean, and, and, it, and, and don't get me wrong, it could get so bad that you think like people say, I'm going through this and I'm going through that, but the operative Words are, you're going through it. You will come off the other end of it. But if you mm -hmm. give up, then you'll, be, you'll stay there. You'll be stagnant. And that's with everything in life. And whoever said it first was right because like the, uh, what's another thing somebody said, like when you find yourself in a situation too deep that you can't get out, then you have to go deeper in it because you, there is another end. And I, that's, the, that's the best thing I can tell anybody is don't give up on anything and, and don't think small. I mean, the God we serve doesn't know the difference between modicum and paramount. You know, you can't ask God for too much and you can't ask yourself for too much. It's like when we start doing things or start thinking, oh no, that's too much, or I can't do this. Then Henry Ford said it best. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. And that's what I go by. That's right. And that's great. That's great advice out there. I, I, I think our champion parents can uh, appreciate that. And I think it's also important that um, parents assess their situation and you utilize the resources around them. Um, we're living in the 21st century now and then we have so much access to information, but we also have access to misinformation as well. So, yeah. <laughs> so I think it's really important for those parents out there or just anybody who wants to accomplish their goal try to connect and link up, get on LinkedIn, try to connect with somebody yeah. who can yeah. tell you uh, how to avoid pitfalls and what to do to accomplish your goal. I think that sometimes people operate in fear and I just feel like you can't do that because for that, for every 100 person that tells you no, there will be that one person that says, you know what, come here, I got you. L listen to what I gotta say. Yeah. Yeah, no you consistency is key. I'm sorry, go ahead, Carl. Oh, no, I just said consistency is key. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, yes. I want to add to that point, um, Dr. Pert, that, you know, sometimes um, when people are doing things, they look at the responses, um, you know, that they get. And sometimes you can't really look at the responses. You have to look more so like, this is something I like to do. So um, I have this joke because I like to make a uh, YouTube video. And there are some, there are some of my videos you'll go look like, did this girl really publish this? You know, but I do it because I enjoy it. You know, and so I try to tell my kids, like sometimes if you're only doing things to get a response, you know, then, you know, you're, it's not going to be successful that way, you know, and you have to definitely 
you know, search, like we talked about last week, if you had the thought and you thought it was good, and then once it came out, it didn't sound as good, you know, you have to really keep pushing it and you have to be careful who you uh, tell your plans to, you know, it's a lot, it's a dream killers out there, you know, and yeah, you just have to be careful who, you know, like you said, keep doing, stay the course. There's a lot of is when she mentioned successful. Successful, the, the way you measure that is different, and especially in my wow. case. You know, my successes and the thing that I think successful is my family. When the people say God judges a tree by the fruit it bears, I'm living off the fruit I put into the world. So that's where all my greatest successes are. There aren't monetary or things like that, because I have a saying when it comes as far as money goes. As long as they print it, I'll be getting it some kind of way. I mean, that's just what it is, but that's not the barometer in which I gauge my successes at all. Okay. Yeah, and, and I think it's also important that people not to go off somebody else's experience. I think it's important to look and learn and see what pitfalls you can avoid. But then a lot of times people um, get, pass out misinformation such as like, I always heard when I was in the state of Michigan, oh, the state, they're so rude. They don't give you information. Now, if I had used that, as a what as a barometer for not uh contacting the state for trying to start a program or i would have not contacted them but what i did was i said you know what okay i hear you but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go off my own experience and i'm going to start contacting people and see what type of response i give so i think it's very important for individuals to create that space in which they say, I'm going to have my own experience. This may have been your experience, but I'm going to create my experience and I'm not going to stop. Like Mr. King said, don't give up. You know, and I you know? say like um, the, uh, when you said you guys do quotes and I gave her a quote that I always, that I wrote that I always say. And I say, you know, the distance between, the distance between success is from ear to ear. You know, and, the, and honestly, something else I always say, the worst vice is advice in most situations. You know, people will tell you this, that, another, but they say an ounce of an example is worth one of a ton of advice. You know, you can, people can give you advice all day, but you can't move because you're not moving like them. You don't, you have different ways of doing things. And the way yeah. you, I mean, they might not have made it because of how they presented themselves to somebody. And that person said, oh, no, we're not doing that. But if you come prepared and present yourself the right way, sometimes that can even hurt you. Somebody, they, they don't like the fact that you are so together. But the thing is, there's somebody who's gonna like what you do and what you say if you present it to enough people because the thoughts in your mind is someone who's like-minded and that's the individual you need to bump into. If you bump into a hundred people who don't agree, the hundred and like you said, the hundred and one person might be like, you know, that right there makes all the sense in the world to me. And they may, that might be the best person. You can't take God out of the equation. He's going to put the people in front of you who are going to put up barriers, but he's also going to put people in front of you who are going to give you a helping hand. And you have to keep stepping over those barriers until you bump into that person. And that might be the best match for you. And I, I, I like, I like that. And, and then I do want to add to that point that somebody may feel discouraged because we all get discouraged at times. I mean, it's just so real, but at the yeah, like, cause woo, I could tell you some stories where it's like, oh my God, but don't let that, um, I don't know if this is a word or not, but I'm going to say it. Uh, <laughs> Hold on. Don't, oh no, wait a minute. Don't let that demotivate you. Let it motivate you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not okay. You know what it means. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, for real, so. I'm getting a t-shirt. Don't be demotivated. <laughs> on the back, be motivated. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, okay. So, Carl, do you have any uh, final thoughts of encouragement uh, to the champion parents? You know, you I guys. I know you gave us some Carol. advice. You well, guys not advice. Carol. I know you know. I think I said you, you, you had me scrape the bottom of the barrel for a lot. The only um, thing like I was saying earlier for anybody that's trying to do anything is as far as it comes to your children, you have to communicate with them. You know, I, I just, there's a reason why you see more um, demolition companies in the phone book than you see construction companies. 
because it's easier to destroy and tear something down than it is to build it. Yeah. You know? So you have to build things with your children and you have to find that common place and you have to encourage them. And even when they want to do it another way, you have to, because you, you might have the same vision. You still have to nurture their vision and you have to look at your children. And this is the crazy thing I've always said. Once my children, the reason I love being a father, I'm just jumping another tangent. When I saw my first child, it made me question, had I ever loved anything before in my life? Mm -hmm. It made me reevaluate. There was, it, I felt something so different. I was dizzy and I never could understand how a father couldn't be with his child. If I tear up on it, that's really gonna be messed up. It was just the most amazing thing in the world to me. And I wanted to give her everything. I wanted to be everything for her. And I failed a lot and I didn't know a lot. And she told me I failed a lot because she was like five years above our other children. So she just, I told her, listen, I tell her time, you were the prototype. I didn't know what to do with you. You, you, uh, I, you upset me enough with talk, talk, she used to write me these long letters about how bad of a parent I was, <laughs> you know? And it was okay for her to express herself. But the thing is you really have to really listen and encourage and realize that once your children's life start, your life has to take the back seat to that in some ways. You have to stop thinking of you as yourself because you have something that's gonna go further than you. It's supposed to, your children are supposed to do more than you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're supposed to give them all your resources. They're supposed to build from that and, and go higher and further. And I mean, I'm glad that that's the one thing I can say about all my children. You know, they all love that. I love, um, you know, we have to a lot of, you know, we have to take ourselves out of the equation sometimes. And it's hard as a parent sometimes not to take uh, some of the things your children do personal. You know, I'm dealing with a 16 year old daughter right now. And, and even my son, he's 11, you know, and it's, it's very difficult sometimes to take myself out of the equation. And sometimes I really have to get humble and just kind of, you know, see why certain uh, behaviors and everything, um, you know, are happening. So listen, I know we are have to end up talking to you again, because you are, you are a wealth of wisdom. And I'm, I'm taking heed to everything you're saying. And, um, you know, as, like I said, as always, we appreciate you. And uh, do you have any uh, followings uh, that our viewers can follow or if they needed to get in contact or reach out? You know, um, the parent company of which I started everything was a company called Clucked Up Comedy. And I never got- Clucked Up? It's clucked up like a chicken cluck. Oh, clucked up, clucked up, okay. Yeah. You know, and Fox too would never say it when I would be on there when I was doing shows. And so that's why I'm on Instagram, you know, um, it's C-L-U-C-K-E-D-U-P-C-O-M-E-D-Y. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, that's <laughs> just the only social media I have with that name or that company, because I'm just Carl D. King. You know, my middle initial is D. So on Facebook and stuff like that, you know, Carl D. Comedy King, you know, that's, that's who I am. So I don't have a whole bunch of social media. And I'm just on Instagram now just putting up TikTok videos because nothing's happening. We, I can't get any venues. Are oh, you doing TikTok videos? No, 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 no. Oh. I, I, <laughs> I was about to say, go ahead, Mr. King, stand no, up, no, stand up. No, go ahead, show, no. show us your moves. I don't even have one pants right now. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say the Instagram was? Say it again. Um, Collect uh, up. Yeah, Clucked Up Comedy, C-L-U-C-K-E-D-U-P, Comedy. You know, and I'm live track. I'm right now, because I need to see. I thought maybe you had some. Oh, no, no, no. I, I am not, I'm camera shy. Why would I be on there doing a video? You seem fine to me. <laughs> I just, right, I just exactly. started looking at TikTok, and there was so much funny stuff on there. There's this girl who does Trump, you know, she, she, she does um, voiceovers of Trump with her own face. She makes me laugh. I saw that. She was on uh, Jimmy Kimmel the uh, Kimmel. She was on Jimmy Kimmel the other day. Oh, was she? Yeah. I, I haven't been watching talk shows because something about it. Sit, watch them sitting in them home, their home. I don't watch them either. It was by mistake. I yeah. I you know I woke up and it was on, and I like Jimmy Kimmel, but I, no, I, I used to before before COVID. I used to watch talk shows, but sitting watch them sitting there without the audience laughter it bothers me. That's wrong. Yeah. I want to do comedic stuff like that. You know, we were trying to get some stuff done at the drive-ins where people could come and do that. But for me, it just takes the lack, the luster from it for me. Yeah. So.
I need yeah. a little fanfare. I need the I need the roots. I need the roots to be in a, to be playing and all that kind of stuff, you know. So, and that's pretty much it. And, I, and one thing I will say is when you all look back over this tape, you will see all the nervous looks on my face because I was I can't see myself really because I can't see with my, I, I'm you know um, nearsighted. So with the glasses on, I can't really see myself. And I know a couple times I was like, like Carl, you're you're looking. I can tell your face is grimaced. You know, well, so. well, you know what? That's okay, Mr. King, because you're also known as a sex symbol. So give us one oh, of those. Wow. <laughs> give us one of those sexy looks. <laughs> I tried to give her a picture of me in a clown nose. I told her use this picture. This this illustrates me better than anything. She didn't use uh, it. And the picture I gave you guys is ten years old. It's the only picture I've ever taken professionally. And every other picture I have of me is either with somebody. I don't like to take selfies. The selfies. I think that's weird. Yeah, well, uh, Mr. King, when I say uh, we really appreciate you on the show, we really do. You gave some um, valuable um, advice that I'm sure that um, our champion parents can start to uh, infuse into their parenthood, um, because I think it's very important. But I do want to say this before I wrap up. Uh, One of the things that you said was um, you have to learn from your mistakes. I think that is so important that parents learn from their mistakes. What you do with one child, you may do differently with another because you learn from your mistakes. And I think it's also important for parents when you recognize that you've done something wrong to forgive yourself, but also allow your child to forgive you by sitting down and communicating and say, you know what, hey, I may have not done this uh, appropriately at this time. I may have been going through something or it was probably all I knew and I was trying my best. So I think it's important that parents communicate with their children if they want to establish or continue that healthy bond, because at the end of the day, everybody has feelings. So I I think I, I appreciate you for saying that as well. So everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. We really, appre- we really, really appreciate your support. Please exercise your uh, vote, complete your census, continue to be safe and wear your mask, practice the CDC um, social uh, distancing. And thank you, Mr. Carl King, a.k.a. Sex Thimbo, for an awesome interview. And thank you, uh, all of our Facebook Live audience, for tuning in to Mommy Talk. Continue to visit our website and social media platforms at Mommy Talk. That's M-O-M-M-I-E-Talk.com. Until next time, continue to be safe and love on your children. Also, Carl and I... Miss uh, Christine is a uh, comedian. So when you looking for your next act. Oh, no. No, I'm not. Don't even put uh, that out there. <laughs> you know, your dress says, when life give you lemons, you know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> <laughs> she got on the Beyonce uh, lemonade dress. I was like, okay. She looked like Mary J. And the person was right oh, on when they said that. I was going to say it, but I didn't want to say it. Because, you know, for people sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when you say they look like a celebrity and they don't think they look like the person. But I was thinking, in fact, someone said it, and the lemons are also too. I was like, she got the Beyonce lemons looking like a Mary J, you know. So. Okay, okay, <laughs> Mary Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye, thank right. you.